One of the most popular questions we get every year is, how long should I water, or how much water should I give to my plants? The answer to that question, of course, is enough for them to be healthy and thriving. That answer might not be as specific as most people would like, but it's actually the only correct one. I'll explain. Now, that's not to say there isn't some general information you can use to get a good baseline, but the primary method to determine how long you should water your plants for is the water and watch method. That is, pick a watering cycle and monitor the health of your plants. Plants are great communicators. They'll tell you if they need more nutrients, more or less water, more or less sunshine. A lot of people are surprised to learn that drip irrigation runs anywhere from 15 to 60 minutes or maybe even longer in some cases. This is due to the slow release of water and it is generally considered a good thing as it makes it water efficient, unlike sprinkler or overhead options that are prone to evaporation. The reason there isn't a more specific answer to this are the many variables that go into it. Planting density, plant maturity, sunlight exposure, microclimate conditions, time of year, time of day, soil type and soil infiltration rates, local precipitation, evapotranspiration rates, and many other factors all influence how much you should water. Many of these factors influence one another and change significantly throughout the season or even throughout the years. When your neighbor finally cuts down that large tree in his yard, the area that used to be shaded is probably gonna require more water. This long list of factors is too long for anyone to account for each and every one individually. Fortunately, doing so is not necessary to finding an efficient irrigation cycle that leaves your plants healthy and thriving. You don't have to go into it completely blind. As I mentioned before, there are some good general rules you can keep in mind when using the water and watch method. And there are a couple steps you can take and products you can use to assist as well. The easiest way to test is to simply run a watering cycle and then dig down into the soil around your plants to gauge the moisture level there. A common cycle to test first is about 20 to 30 minutes. And that's for drip irrigation, of course. If you're using micro sprinklers, spray jets, or sprinklers, you wanna go with a shorter cycle at first. While you're digging around the soil, Grab a handful of soil about the size of your fist near the root level of your plants and squeeze your fist. After a few moments, relax your hands and observe the properties of your soil. If it's crumbly but stays together a little bit, you're probably at about the right moisture level. If it immediately crumbles and falls out of your hand, your soil's too dry. And if it stays in a tight, wet ball, your soil's most likely too wet. Finally, there are some products you can use to help you test the moisture of your soil. Take this moisture meter, for example. This small meter can accurately measure the moisture content of your soil. To use, simply insert the tip of the moisture meter into the soil to about root level. You might need to wiggle a little bit until you see the needle slightly move on the dial. Once it does, leave it there until the needle stops moving and stabilizes in place. That'll be the moisture level of your soil. Once it's done, remove the moisture meter from the soil and wipe the tip clean and put it away until you run your next test. Always keep in mind, the moisture content of your soil is likely to change throughout the year, so you'll want to run this test multiple times and adjust your watering cycles accordingly. The dial on this moisture sensing meter, like most, is color coded to make reading it easy. Red indicates your soil is too dry. Green is that sweet spot where it's moist, but not wet. And finally, blue means you have a little bit too much moisture in your soil. The sensor is versatile. It can check your garden, it can check your flower beds, it can even check your turf. A couple quick tips to get the moist out of your moisture sensor. Try to avoid rocks and stones. If you have particularly rocky soil, it might be worth checking for rocks in the area prior to using the sensor. And don't dip the end into straight water. It could cause irreparable harm to your moisture sensing meter. Every year we get emails from customers across the nation sending us pictures of their healthy, vibrant gardens and asking us how long should they water their plants. Usually they're doing it exactly right. And you can tell by the healthy, thriving plants. That is the best indicator that you're giving enough water to your plants. Your own instincts and visual hues in the plants are gonna be the best indicator that your plants are getting enough water. One of the most important things you can do is to water consistently. Now that doesn't mean water all the time or water too much, but just on a nice consistent schedule. Just like people, plants like to have their daily meal. To help establish baseline water needs, Google your plants and see what the general information covers about the water needs. Keep in mind, it'll be different based on different geographical locations due to the different conditions. Finally, if your neighbors grow the same or similar plants successfully, ask them about their experiences with it. If they're close neighbors, the conditions are likely to be pretty close to the same. Now that you've learned about how much to water, you may be wondering how to deliver that water. If you'd like to learn more about emitter types, check out our video there that compares the pros and cons of spray and drip.